it's safe to say most Americans have either been to Disneyland or Disney World. Oh. I've been to Disney World in Orlando twice now. Yep. The first time I went, I was 10 years old. I've been only once. My family once. just returned from our second trip as a family 10 years later. We went during February, so it was relatively quiet at all the parks. Wait, I went during we did September. Go to all four parks. We started with the Hollywood Studios, then Epcot, then the Animal Kingdom, and then finally the Magic Kingdom. I had a great time until I went on Splash Mountain. Aww. Splash Mountain is one of the more popular rides at Disney World, and I remember it being my favorite 10 years ago. Since mm -hmm. we left all the other parks relatively early, we decided to stay at the Magic Kingdom until midnight. After the nightly fireworks, the park started to really quiet down, basically to the point that the park was dead. We got on a few attractions with no lines. My little brother, who was 13, was really getting into the spirit. He was wearing mouse ears and a bright green Mickey Mouse shirt. Me and my older brother teased him about it throughout the day. Somehow, we were so busy that it wasn't until around 11.30 at night that I remembered that we hadn't even gone on Splash Mountain. Mm-mm. I reminded my family, but my parents reminded me that the ride closes at 11. Since we were already in the frontier land, which is the section of the park that Splash Mountain is in, I convinced my family to check anyway. I walked ahead of my family to try and save time. When I arrived to the Splash Mountain area, there wasn't a soul in sight, other than the guy manning the entrance. He informed me that the ride closes when the park closes. I had a feeling I was right, but... I suddenly felt the urge to pee, so I called out to my family, who was still approaching the entrance, to wait while I ran to the bathroom. Conveniently, there was one right by the entrance. I'll spare you the details, but after I returned to the entrance of the ride, my family was gone. I called for them, walking around cluelessly, but there wasn't even a response. Aww. I turned back to the entrance to ask the worker who was standing there if he saw where they went, but he was gone too. I was about to take out my phone and call them when, suddenly, I heard the sound of my two brothers laughing from down the entrance of the ride. What the hell are they doing? I thought. They're not planning on going to ride without me. Are they? I ran down the cave-like entrance of the ride, but the sounds of my brothers laughing didn't seem to get any closer. No. Nope. I called out for my parents and for my brothers, but they didn't respond. How could they not hear me? Mm -mm. I made it to the room where you board the log boats, but there were no employees anywhere in sight. But what I did see was one of the boats leaving the boarding room, and I could see my little brother in his green shirt and mouse ears sitting in the back seat of one of them. He was next to somebody else, probably my older brother. I screamed their names in anger, but they didn't hear me. I couldn't understand why they would go on the ride without me. Another boat was about to leave the room, so I hopped onto it since there were no employees to tell me otherwise. I was on the next boat behind my family. As I slowly rode out of the room and eventually outside, I couldn't see my family ahead of me. Aww. It didn't make sense. I wasn't yep. too far behind them to start with. How fast could their boat be going? <laughs> I sat with mixed emotions, mostly confusion and anger, as the ride slowly progressed until I finally entered the cave with all of those singing robots. I guess where the riot actually begins. This is where things began to get strange. Well, stranger. The first things I was greeted by were a bunch of giant singing birds. I remembered these things from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. As they sang their song, their heads slowly turned to constantly face the boat and their eyes all their eyes seemed to be locked onto mine. I didn't remember them doing this last time. It was nope. very unsettling seeing those things looking at me as if they were actually aware of my presence. Yep. I obviously assumed it was just some updated technology to add to the atmosphere of the ride. After all, yep. it was Disney. Mm -hmm. Sitting all alone on this ride, I felt uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I know it's a Disney ride, but you wouldn't understand. Being on a dark and slow ride all alone at this time at night, with seemingly nobody around, it, it gives a very unsettling feeling. 
Ooh, brr, brr. My favorite. Well, my fr favorite is favorite is Brer Rabbit. I like it when he shouts, I'll knock his head clean off. My favorite movie. Specifically, a hungry fox and his dim witted henchman bear who constantly make goofy attempts to capture a rabbit for a quick snack. Anyway, back to the ride. Normally, Burr Bear would be carrying around a big wooden club, but this animatronic, he was holding an axe. And instead of his normally goofy appearance, he had a more intimidating look that was definitely not child-friendly. Mm -hmm. And standing on his shoulders was Burr Fox, only a much more evil and scary version. He had much sharper teeth, and instead of his kid-friendly evil smile, it was a much more disturbing face, a clearly unhappy and resentful face. Upon getting closer, I could see that the fox had a large knife in his hand. The two animatronics began speaking, or at least the ride audio provided the sounds of their character speaking, but yeah. the voices were also off. The voice of the bear was so muffled and distorted that it was incomprehensible, and the voice of the fox... It almost sounded demonic. The background music was too loud for me to make out anything being said, though. Mm -hmm. My boat passed the two characters, only to approach something equally unsettling. There was Bear Rabbit, but instead of singing like I remembered he did, he was just sitting on top of a broken mailbox. Instead of his normally happy face, he had on a depressed face with bloodshot eyes and a red stain on his pink shirt. No. Presumably blood. This wasn't right. Disney wouldn't do something like this. No. I didn't want to be on that ride anymore. I shouted out for my family in hopes that they might hear me, but there was no response. Mm -hmm. The song switched to the Laughing Place song. But it <laughs> That's my favorite. Different. It didn't have that cheerful feel to it. At this point, every single animatronic character on the side was making direct eye contact with me. Oh, poor Br'er Rabbit. Friendly faces, though. They were angry, hateful faces. This has to be a joke, I thought. I'm, I must be going crazy or something. They wouldn't do something like this. Not, no. not at a kid's park. No, no. The next time that I saw the main characters, it was even worse. Bear Fox was waving his arm in anger and yelling something incomprehensible at Bear Bear, whose axe was now covered in blood. The first thought that came up was, whose or what's blood? And then I saw that Bear Fox was actually waving something in his hand. It was a dismembered arm, the arm of Bear Rabbit. In front of the two robots was a blood trail. A blood trail that looked too real. Aww. It all looked too real. I could see fake blood dripping out of the prop that the fox was holding. It has to be fake blood, I thought to myself. Mm-hmm. Before exiting this section of the ride, there was one more disturbing scene. Bear Rabbit, limping across the field with a trail of blood following him. It didn't make sense. The blood actually dripped on the floor, only appearing behind him. How could that be unless someone cleans up the blood after every time a boat passes by? But by this time, it was pointless to try and rationalize any of this. Yeah. All I wanted was to get off this ride and see my family's reaction. After this, finally came the most anticipated part of the ride. The drop. The big drop. The boat climbed up to an angle and began to climb up the hill. At this point, anybody would be excited, but I wasn't even thinking about it. I was so focused on what I had just seen on a Disney ride. As I neared the top of the hill, there was one more scene waiting at the side. From what I remember ten years ago, it was Bear Rabbit tied to a pole over a fire begging to be let go by Bear Fox, but this time, it was the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. Aww. Bear Rabbit was still seen tied to a pole over a fire. Yeah. Bear Bear was also there this time, with Bear Fox standing right beside him. The bear raised his axe high in the air, and with one swift and almost too realistic motion, he swung the axe straight through Bear Rabbit's neck, slicing his head clean off. Fake blood sprayed out from the thing as the head fell to the floor. The red liquid even sprayed onto my face, and that's when I smelt it. The metallic smell that blood gives off. It was real blood. 
I started to gag in disgust and shock, ready to throw up. Yeah. The head hit the ground with a loud thud and then rolled into the water. Suddenly, all the lights in the ride went out and all the background noises stopped and it was pitch dark inside. All I could see was the hint of moonlight coming from the top of the hill and then coming from behind me. Even over the sounds of the rails pulling the boat up the hill and the water moving down the hill, I could hear the sound of heavy splashing coming from the bottom. Mm -hmm. The kind of splashing you would hear from somebody running through water. I turned around to see nothing but darkness behind me. But the splashing was getting louder. And just as I reached the top of the lift hill, I could see a giant humanoid figure, probably eight feet tall, begin to run up the lift hill. As it ran closer, it stretched out its long arms, seemingly ready to pull me out of this boat. The shock of it all prevented me from being able to note any of its features before dropping down to the bottom of the hill outside. Mm -hmm. What did I just see? I, I must be going crazy. What the fuck was that? I thought it was all a dream. I pinched myself. I even slapped myself in the face a few times. But it was real. Whatever. I was outside now. This was my chance to get off this nuthouse ride. Yep. I looked for any place to climb over the fake rock walls, but all of the walls were covered by big spikes. They weren't even just decorative props. These things looked dangerously sharp. Yeah. They looked deadly. Mm -hmm. They covered every single imaginable place to climb out. It was like I was really in a giant briar patch. It was like these spikes were put here to prevent anybody from escaping the ride. I pulled out my phone and turned on its flashlight to see if it was safe to even hop out of the boat. I shined the flashlight down into the water, revealing even more spikes under the water. There was no way out at all. No. I screamed at the top of my lungs for help, but there was nobody around. Mm -hmm. It was pointless. I continued to constantly glance over my shoulder to make sure that that thing that I saw wasn't behind me. And with that, I slowly rode back into the caves of the ride, where I was greeted by the zippity doo -dah song. Only my favorite. It was a much slower and depressing version. Aww. The first thing I was greeted by after riding into the cave was a big sign hanging over my head, reading, Rest in Peace, Bear Rabbit. And to the right were countless animatronic animals, ranging from frogs to chickens to ducks, all dressed in black, apparently mourning at the death of Bear Rabbit. Suddenly, the boat came to a sudden stop, and all the background music stopped, along with the motors and the water flow, leaving nothing but utter silence. I focused my attention to the dozens of animatronic characters, who were now all frozen, apparently turned off. Sad. I turned away, scanning the room for any actual living beings or some kind of exit. Mm -hmm. I again resorted to shouting for help, but of course it did no good. Mm -mm. Just as I was ready to give up trying to escape the ride, my luck finally seemed to change as I saw the glowing red text of an exit sign, slightly hidden behind a big rock. That was my way out. There were no spikes in here. I took one more glance over my shoulder to make sure nothing was behind me, but... That's when I saw something in my peripheral vision. What? I didn't want to look, but I nope. forced myself to turn around yep. and see that the dozens of mourning animatronic animals have all turned their heads to face me. But whatever was doing this didn't allow me to witness this for more than a few seconds because the lights went out inside the cave, once again leaving me in complete darkness and silence. What Even the heck? I, cold inside, I felt myself starting to sweat. And I could feel my heart punching the inside of my chest. Then, the sound of heavy footsteps coming from the platform broke the silence. I found myself hugging the edge of the boat, too scared to even think about getting out of the boat. The footsteps stopped right at the edge of the platform, and then the boat started to rock back and forth. <gasps> Oh, I'm Something not scared, I'm just boat. still listening. I leaned against the wall in shock and horror, still as a statue. The thought of something grabbing my foot the second I tried to hop out of the boat haunted my mind, paralyzing me in that position. I stayed still like this, not even moving my arm to itch for what felt like ten minutes. My eyes were somewhat adjusting to the dark, but 
I refused to turn my head to see what was behind me. Mm -hmm. Just as soon as I began to think I should make a dash for it, I felt something grab my right shoulder. <gasps> I didn't even dare to look at the hand that was grabbing me. I immediately jumped out of the boat and ran onto the platform. I grabbed my phone and turned on the flashlight, helping me find my way through the props to the exit door. The door led to a long hallway, where I eventually found a back door leading to the outside of the ride. <sighs> I was safe. I made it out alive. I immediately dialed my mom's phone number, and she answered within seconds, as if she was waiting for me to call. I asked her if she was alright, and she said she was fine. I screamed into the phone to meet me by the exit of the park right away. She sounded confused and asked me where I was, but I hung up the phone and ran to the exit of the Magic Kingdom, planning to never return again. Aww. Since this experience, my parents have been sending me to many psychiatrists and seeking as much therapeutic help as possible. But I'm still convinced that I hadn't imagined it. Mm -hmm. It was too real. Yeah, it was. My advice to you, never ride mm -hmm. something like this alone during a very slow day late at night. Nope. I don't know how or why they would do this, but I, I don't know if Disney is hiding something. Probably. I still think of the creature I caught a glimpse of and whatever yeah. the thing was that was in the boat with me. I sometimes wish I had turned around to see what had grabbed my shoulder. Yeah. Just to kill the curiosity that I know will never go away. Mm hmm But maybe I should be happy I didn't turn around. No. Possibly the strangest thing about all of this, though. When I met up with my family at the exit of the park and tried to get some reactions from them, they told me that after I went to the bathroom, they simply walked around waiting for me. They never got on the ride. Oh, sad. <laughs>